A statement this morning from Donald Trump putting a new twist on his constant lie. This, 9.34 a.m. Eastern, the fraudulent presidential election of 2020 will be, from this day forth, known as the big lie. 53 minutes later, this tweet from Congresswoman Liz Cheney, the number three in the House Republican leadership. The 2020 presidential election was not stolen. Anyone who claims it was is spreading the big lie, turning their back on the rule of law and poisoning our democratic system. Already this morning, even before this new back and forth, there was talk among pro-Trump House Republicans of calling a new vote on Cheney's leadership job. Let's get straight up to Capitol Hill and CNN's Manu Raju. Uh, Manu, an escalation at a very critical time for Congresswoman Cheney. Yeah, there's a, definitely a push internally to have another vote to oust her from the leadership job. John, you'll recall in the aftermath of her joining nine other House Republicans to impeach Donald Trump on inciting an insurrection, there was a vote that was pushed for by the House Republican uh, conference, typically the mostly the Trump, the, the staunchest Trump defenders in the conference, pushing for a vote to oust her. At that time, Cheney said, bring it on. She said, let's have the vote. It happened behind closed doors in February. She won handedly that secret ballot election. But now things appear to be changing. Whether there's enough votes to oust or remains to be seen, these are still secret ballot elections. But in talking to a number of House Republicans, it's clear that the concerns about her are growing in a large part. It's about this feud with Donald Trump. It, the case, some, some of it coming in the aftermath of critical comments she made about Donald Trump at the party's retreat last week when she was asked by reporters. But also this being such a central litmus test uh, to among the number of House Republicans as well as uh, the party at large, whether or not Donald Trump won the election or not, most Republicans, House Republicans, are not won't say definitively one way or the other that Joe Biden legitimately won. Some still back his election lie, and others like Liz Cheney are pushing back, which is why you saw that tweet today. She is making it very clear that anyone who sides with the big lie is undercutting the uh, pillar of American democracy. But that is not what we are hearing from the other members of the Republican leadership. That's certainly not here. What we're hearing from Kevin McCarthy, the top House Republican who has aligned himself with Donald Trump and is trying to, as he says, unify the party ahead of their efforts to win back the House in the midterms next year. So the question ultimately for Republicans, John, is will they come and force a vote to try to oust her? Will Kevin McCarthy back her? Another big question. He did last time, but he could call for a snap election potentially as soon as next week. Unclear what he will do. John. As soon as, as soon as next week, we'll keep an eye on that. A choice for House Republicans that it actually is the choice for Republican voters all across the country as we get closer to the midterms. Mano, appreciate uh, the hustle and the live reporting. Let's continue the conversation with me to share their insights. CNN's Phil Mattingly and former Republican Congresswoman from Utah, Mia Love. Congresswoman, I want to start with you. Uh, you know how this works uh, in the House Republican family. You know this divide exists. Uh, Liz Cheney has said for some time, well, I was asked a question whenever she, she criticizes the former president and the things he says. She says she doesn't go looking for it. Today, she tweeted. 53 minutes after the president repeated his lie, she tweeted. So she's asking for the fight this time. Actually, you know what, John? I think that there's a bigger concern than that. She is concerned that when the president puts out the fact that the election or his facts that the elections are stolen, she's afraid that people aren't going to get out and vote, that that messes, that pit instills fear or um, people are concerned about the electoral system, which we saw it actually hurt us in in Georgia. So I think that she's actually going out saying, look, everybody can get out and vote because the electoral system actually works. And the other thing I want to say is that it's really important that Kevin McCarthy does everything he can to make sure that he tries and protects Liz Cheney because of an opinion she has. This is not an this is not a policy divide. This is an opinion she has about a former president and she is a one one of the only women in Republican leadership, it would look really bad for the Republican conference to oust her. Uh, I agree. Liz Cheney speaking the truth about what happened in the election. She's speaking the truth that it is poison. It does poison our democratic system. Uh, when you question results that have been already audited and looked at in any of the states that were close. Uh, but Phil Mattingly came into the conversation at this point. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, who did back her last time, as Manu rightly noted, he's kind of given the green light now. He has been very noncommittal to what happens next time, saying it's up to the conference. And Congressman Love says he needs to stand with Liz Cheney. Uh, is he going to have the spine to do that if Donald Trump clearly wants her to go? Nope. 
It doesn't appear that way right now. Look, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. This is obviously moving fast, but it's moving fast against Congresswoman Cheney. And Congresswoman Cheney is not, uh, she's a very savvy politician. She understands what's going on, and she knows that it's not just the, as, as Manu was saying, the, the, the lawmakers that are so behind President Trump. It's also more moderate lawmakers right now who are starting to speak out quietly about the fact that, look, the, the, the bigger picture here is this is putting us in a bad spot. And I think, look, there were a couple weeks in January where there were real questions about the role President Trump was going to play in this party. Those questions have long since been answered, and they are answered by the posture of Kevin McCarthy. They are answered by the posture even of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who shares what Liz Cheney feels and thinks about President Trump, and yet won't engage on President Trump at all. He recognizes, and I think everybody has made the calculation, uh, morally bankrupt or not, that you have to have President Trump on board if you want to win the majority in 2022, which is the calculation that Kevin McCarthy has made. It's the calculation that the rank and file Republicans have made. You know, you made the point when the first snap leadership election, Liz Cheney said, bring it on. With that tweet today, she is once again saying, bring it on. With the full recognition that saying bring it on this time around likely ends up with her out of Republican leadership, perhaps without a seat in the U.S. House. And Liz Cheney seems to be, at least at this point in time, totally okay with that, looking more, I think, towards legacy and how people will look back at this moment than what it means necessarily inside the Republican conference at this moment. Inside the Republican conference. And you get the political calculations. President Trump is popular with Republicans. President Trump can help raise money. Uh, yes, I get the politics, but there's a principle uh, that Congressman Cheney is talking about today because the 45th president of the United States, again this morning, if he went quiet, that would be one thing. But again this morning, he puts out a statement, Congresswoman, that is a lie that is just a flat out lie not about what day of the week it is and not about even a policy but about the fundamentals of our democracy he lost the votes have been recounted there's a quack re-audit going on in Maricopa County right now but the votes have been counted but my question to you is how big is this in the sense that in your state this weekend we'll show some of this Mitt Romney was speaking to the Utah Republican Convention Mitt Romney like Congressman Cheney uh, has her differences with President Trump Mitt Romney like Congressman Cheney thought the president should be impeached or in his cases in his case convicted in the United States Senate he's trying to speak to state Republicans and he gets this you might call me an old-fashioned Republican I am been in our party. Oh yeah, you can you can boo all you like, but I've been a Republican all my life. If you don't recall, I was a Republican nominee for president in 2012. Now, I get this is a state Republican convention. That's where the loudest voices show up. That's where the more pro-Trump voices are going to show up. Mitt Romney has been through this in Utah before. Is it the same, or is it getting worse for him? As in, are the pro-Trump forces gaining steam or not? Well, there was a censure, also a censure vote that was there right. that day, where it was 798 to 711. So he almost got censured, um, which is incredibly concerning. But when you talk about the big picture, the big picture is this. Um, Republicans are, they, Donald Trump may help in a primary, but it's going to hurt Republicans in a general. Because there are still, uh, this is convention, right? There are a lot of delegates that are very just hardcore um, on Donald Trump's side. You want to ask any delegate how conservative they are, the first answer they'll say is, you know, I, I uh, supported Donald Trump. Where the rest of the world, the majority, I think, um, center right, center left, you name it, they're like, look, we've got some policies that we have to live by, and the president has not lived up to those policies. So I think that um, the Republican Party really has to do a better job with stopping this infighting and starting to talk about the policies that they could capitalize on, especially when it comes to all of the things that the current president is trying to bring forth and, and how we're going to pay for that. It's an excellent point, except, Phil Manley, I'll close on this, in the sense that you can have principle and you can talk about policy, or you can think, well, the Democrats have a five or six vote margin in the House, and if we have a good year next year, we take power back in the House of Representatives, and to your point earlier, they believe they need Trump on their side to do that. Uh, this is Steve Scalise, the majority whip. The idea that you must that you just disregard President Trump is not where we are, and frankly, he has a lot to offer still, that to Axios. Jim Banks, who many think would replace Congresswoman Cheney if she got voted out, I think a lot of us would like to see or join the team, be on the same team, same mission, the same focus. Lance Gooden, the Texas Republican, tweeting this weekend prediction. She'll be out of her GOP leadership role by month's end. They are thinking about getting the speaker's gavel and the chairmanship's back, not about are we supporting 
the big lie, the continuation of Donald Trump's big lie, even though it is poison on democracy. They are somehow able to ignore everything that happened from November 3rd through January 6th to move on purely through the basis of, will this get us closer to the majority? I don't think there's any question about that. I think if you ask them straight up, they would probably acknowledge that. I think the most interesting part, and Congresswoman Love brings it up, there are no shortage of issues for the Republican conference to attack the current president on. When you look at what he's put on the table, just transformative economic policies that would push the country in a more progressive direction than it's gone in maybe 50 or 60 years, this is the type of stuff that Republicans which should, would be looking at and saying, let's go. We can write ads off this every single day if we wanted to. We think we can win on this. These are our issues. Uh, austerity, fiscal restraint, all of these types of things should be what Republicans would traditionally be talking about with a brand new president. And yet they have decided to pick these internal wars. And I think part of that is because they recognize that if you're going off historical precedent, if you're going off just the sheer uh, kind of very limited margin in the current House, they think that the odds are very much on their side to win the majority. And so they care more about positioning themselves and ensuring they keep as much of the party together uh, than they do necessarily about attacking Joe Biden. I think the flip side of that is that they're kind of opening the door right now uh, to President Biden and his agenda because they're not necessarily going after it the way Republicans did back in 2009 with President Obama. Mm -hmm.